Hello everybody. So here is the answer to today's quiz. Um, this is a slightly difficult quiz, but a classic case and I hope um, to also illustrate certain points by means of this quiz. So here is the, uh, here are a few histological images I posted initially. So even on low power, you can see that the infiltrate is quite dense, superficial and deep. And uh, here you can all, or you already see the papillary, uh, sorry, the, the subcorneal postules forming microabscesses. And the infiltrate here is um, going deep associated with the paniculitis. You can make that out here. Now, higher power just illustrates the same thing. You can see lots of neutrophils. These are polymorphs. You can make them out even on low power. Um, now, I didn't purposefully um, put in questions of, um, you know, spongiosis, whether there is any spongiosis or whether there is any interface change. Often when the infiltrate is so dense, it will attack anything and everything in the vicinity. So therefore, yes, there is vacular interface change. The, the basement membrane is almost destroyed. But uh, that is just because there are so many neutrophils and the acute cytotoxic um, you know, cytokines released from the neutrophils, etc., will destroy everything and anything around it. And hence, you have neutrophils going into the epidermis, destroying the, you know, derma epidermal junction, collagen, everything is being destroyed here. What you can see in higher power is sort of this fibrin within the small vessel wall. This is still the papillary dermis, some extravasated RBCs you can see here, all these red cells. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the derma epidermal junction. This is basically a close up of this area. So that is being represented here in this bit. You can see sort of fibrinoid necrosis uh, of the vessel wall. Now, this is a very small vessel wall. So, um, yeah, there is thrombus and fibrin. And difficult to sort of uh, differentiate thrombus and fibrin when you have such a small vessel and there's so much intense inflammation. Now, um, here is a large sort of uh, medium vessel in the um, dermis. This is probably a, a vein rather than an artery because you can see a lot of valves within it. And you can see that there is inflammation even within the vessel wall. But there is no fibrinoid necrosis within the vessel wall. There is no thrombus within the vessel wall. Now, remember when there is so much inflammation, the inflammatory cells have to go through the vessel wall to come out into the surrounding subcutis or dermis and therefore you will invariably find diapedesis which is basically the finding of inflammatory cells within a vessel wall you will well in you will invariably spot this in um, when the inflammation is so dense unless there is definite fibrinoid necrosis within the vessel wall we do not call this a true vasculitis um, so yes, there is there is uh, um, there is diapedesis. You're seeing inflammatory cells within the vessel wall here, but there is no true vasculitis um, according to um, well uh, standard norms or, or, or definitions of vasculitis that you may see in textbooks. And you can see here there is a nice lobular paniculitis. Okay, so there is a nice lobular paniculitis associated with a dense inflammatory infiltrate, predominantly neutrophils, which extend from the epidermis up to the deep dermis and typically you're seeing here this playing of the collagen bundles this is almost like granulomanulare the collagen bundles are degenerate and swollen and they are surrounded by these neutrophils um, all around okay you see occasional eosinophils too so what is the diagnosis now so far based on um, what we've seen we're essentially seeing a dense neutrophilic infiltrate, okay, which is associated with a lobular paniculitis, fibrinoid necrosis, small vessels, uh, thrombi in the small vessels, extravasation of RBC, um, yeah, and uh, you're also seeing subcorneal postules, which can sometimes, you know, bring into uh, doubt whether this may be a fungal infection. So, pityriasiform spongiosis is absent. Uh, you're actually seeing a neutrophilic spongiosis, if at all. There is an interstitial infl inflammatory infiltrate composed of uh, neutrophils, uh, splaying the collagen bundles. There is a lobular pancreatitis. There is extravasation of RBC. There is leukocytoclasis. So, if you're seeing here, this, there is definite leukocytoclasis, uh, nuclear dust 
is, is visible even on um, low power here. Okay, so uh, this is all nuclear dust. All of these are not intact neutrophils. These are all those nuclear dust along with the neutrophils. Uh, Fibro and necrosis of medium vessels is absent. Fibro and thrombi are in fact present. All right. The predominant inflammatory cell type is neutrophil here. So you have to correlate with the clinical here. Now essentially what we're seeing is a neutrophilic dermatosis. Okay. And that is your primary diagnosis. So this is a 50 year old male with rheumatoid arthritis presenting with painful papules and nodules on both legs for two weeks associated with intermittent porexia. Now, um, well syndrome should be predominantly eosinophil, so this is ruled out. Erythroma injuratum is not associated with such a dense neutrophilic infiltrate, though there is lobular paniculitis. Erythema nodosum, there may be lots of neutrophils in the acute phase, but again, it's a predominantly septal panniculitis. Again, you don't see an interstitial infiltrate to this extent. Erythema elevatum diatinum is essentially a chronic leukocytic elastic vasculitis associated with a lot of um, fibrosis in the dermis, and it's a chronic condition, though it often presents on the legs, as in this case, but it's a chronic condition. Langerhans cystocytosis, I've just put in um, as an easy exclusion. There are no Langerhans cells here. The diagnosis here is of the, of the um, differentials I've put in here is sweet syndrome. Why is it sweet syndrome? Uh, well, sweet syndrome is essentially a neutrophilic dermatosis. I, I, I only want you to make that diagnosis um, and, and you should be able to easily pick it out from the differentials chosen here. Now remember, rheumatoid arthritis is, is also as, associated with a number of other related conditions. One being palisaded neutrophilic and granulomatous dermatosis. The other related condition is rheumatoid neutrophilic dermatosis. Now I have to say that I didn't want to confuse you by putting in these differentials because for practical purposes, all of these um, overlap. Sweet syndrome neutrophilic granulomatous, uh, palisaded neutrophilic and granulomatous dermatosis and rheumatoid neutrophilic uh, dermatosis are all, all related conditions. Sweet syndrome can be associated with rheumatoid arthritis as well and also other systemic inflammatory conditions. The histological features of all these conditions overlap and I didn't want you want to confuse you and make a differential or, or try to differentiate between these entities. Um, now, when you see splaying of collagen bundles like this, people may choose to call this palisaded uh, neutrophilic granulomatous dermatosis because it is a pattern that resembles granuloma annuli. However, such a pattern can be seen even in sweets and can be seen in rheumatoid neutrophilic dermatosis and it is not exclusive to uh, PGND. Personally, I am a lumper rather than a splitter and all these are related entities, whether you call this PGND or whether you call this rheumatoid neutrophilic dermatosis, whether you call it sweets. I do not care because it does not change your management. It, the hair splitting is purely for academic purposes. All right. I hope you enjoyed this quiz. i happy to answer any further questions. If you have any, please feel free to message me. Thank you.